Hey guys, this is Curtis Alexander. I'm a pharmacist. In this video, we're going to be talking about omeprazole, also known by the brand name Pralisec. I'll be going over the basics of it, including how it works, what it's used for, the dosage that you see, but mainly we'll be spending some time on the side effects because I think uh, it's kind of overlooked at times. There are there can be some serious side effects with it, so I want to touch on that. As a reminder, if you want options outside of drugs and surgery, make sure to go to curtis-alexander.com. Get the free report. I'll send that out to you. So first of all, what does it do in the body? That's important to know anytime we're talking about a medication. It'll help you understand the side effects. So you have something called the hydrogen. It also includes sodium, but there's a there's a hydrogen pump, a potassium pump, and this is how basically your stomach becomes acidic, right? So what we have is this pump and we have hydrogen coming out, chloride coming out, and potassium coming in. And what omeprazole does is it blocks this step. So your stomach acid becomes less acidic, more basic. Sounds great for heartburn, but there are some issues down the road. So one of the things to keep in mind is you have valves. You have a valve at the basis of your esophagus. And one of the theories is, hey, this becomes too relaxed and you get stomach acid. So if we can lower the acidity, that's a good thing. And it turns out not always the case. All right, so as far as dosing, it really depends on how many episodes you have in a week. And we're talking for GERD, for gastroesophageal reflux disease. Um, there's other things you can use it for, but I want to focus on GERD. That's the most common one. So less than two episodes a week, you can, they're probably going to start you out at 10 milligrams a day. You can bump it up to 20 milligrams after four to eight weeks. If it goes away, then they'll probably have you stop it after eight weeks. Okay. If you have more than two episodes a week, it's probably going to be 20 to 40 milligrams a day, starting at 20, maybe increasing to 40. The common theme here with the dosing is if you get asymptomatic after eight weeks, you really do want to try to get off it. And there's some reasons for that. And that's what we're getting into now. So side effects. Now I'm going to start with some of the more serious ones. They're not common. They're more rare, but they can be very serious. So this is subacute cutaneous lupus. All right. Um, very, very rare. Uh, I've never seen it, but it can happen. Basically a skin rash. It can happen within three days. It can take three and a half years. So it's what they call idiosyncratic. There's no way to predict who, who it's going to happen to. However, if you have a family history of lupus, that's something you're going to watch out for. That's a big risk, risk factor for it. A little unknown one that I have seen this enteric infection. So stomach infections. All right. So this is related to how the drug acts. Remember Prilosec, I don't want to say it stops your acid secretion, but it causes less stomach acid. When you have less stomach acid, remember that's what your body is designed to do is your, your acid in your stomach is supposed to be very acidic. Okay. It's supposed to kill a lot of bacteria. When you make it less acidic, you can get bad bacteria that can survive in that environment. For example, norovirus, uh, E. coli, those sorts of things. So you can see some of these stomach infections. Um, it tend to be more prevalent at higher doses, it tends to be more prevalent in people who have a compromised immune system, cancer therapies, those sorts of things. Okay. Other thing, interestingly, fractures, you can have an increased risk of fractures. Why in the world would that happen? whole bunch of different things going on. But one of the things we see again, coming back to how it acts in your body that decrease the more basic stomach acid, the less acidic stomach acid, you can get a decrease in calcium absorption. When that happens, you can get what's called hyperparathyroid. In long term, what we're looking at, you can also see a decrease in magnesium absorption a decrease in B12 levels. Remember, you get your nutrients by eating nutrient rich foods. They're broken down in your stomach. They're absorbed into the bloodstream. When you don't have the acid that you normally do, you will get a decrease in these nutrients that are being absorbed. So that can lead to problems, one of which is fractures. Okay. So 
Again, risk factors, long-term use, higher dose, and if you're taking Prilosec with some of the H2 blockers, for example, one would be Pepsid, okay? Another more common, I see this a fair amount, and that's respiratory infections. Well, how in the world can you get a respiratory infection by taking something like Prilosec? Remember, again, we have a more basic environment, less acidic, that relaxes that valve leading to the esophagus. And basically what you can have is you can have your stomach contents aspirate, go up that uh, esophagus into the lungs. Um, you can get those fine particles in there. And again, your, your stomach works best when it has an acidic environment, shuts that valve off when when the valve recognizes that the acidity just simply isn't there it relaxes and you can have these respiratory infections and it's somewhat common uh, roughly 10 percent maybe a bit more can see this so it's something to watch out for i guess the moral of the story you guys is that if you have heartburn I'm not saying Prilosec can't help in the short term. It's not something I'd want to see anybody on long term because you need acid in your stomach. If you're having long term heartburn, there may be something else going on. Usually the people I'm able to sit down with, it's related to the foods they're eating. They have to change their diet. So yeah, it's great to be able to throw a Prilosec or a Meprazole at it and get some instant relief but you have to figure out something else long-term. You want stomach acid, stomach acid isn't the problem. But hopefully that is valuable. Let me know in the comments, have you taken a Meprazole? Did it help? Did you have any side effects from it? It helps me, it helps other people. Um, so let me know, and again, I hope the video was helpful. And until the next one, I'll see you, thanks.